In this video, I'll cover how to create a topography, either from scratch or from bringing in a CAD file, how to modify and edit the topography, how to use the cut fill tool, how to annotate, and then how to place plantings and trees. This will be a lot to cover, so it's going to go over in a couple parts. The simplest but most time consuming way to create a topo is to draw it out from scratch. To do that, first go to the site plan by going to the browser window to the left, click on site, then choose the Massing and Site tab and click Topo Surface. From here, it brings you into a Place Point tool, and you'll notice in the option bar at the top of the ribbon, or at the bottom of the ribbon, you can change an elevation that that point defines. I'll change it to zero feet to start out, and just start clicking to create a surface. Now that a face has been created from the points I've placed down, this surface is at a zero elevation. And I can start building up a topo in layers just like you would a cake by changing the elevation as I place points. So the next layer of points I'll lay down will be at two feet of an elevation by changing its dialog box in the option bar. And then just start clicking to place this layer. And then the next one is four feet and so on. And you can start creating this topo as large and complicated as you want to um, if you have the time. Once you're done, just click finish, finish Surface. And if I go to a 3D view using the 3D shortcut tool, you can see it's not only just a topo in plan, but it's also a 3D model. Most of the time, you're probably not going to be drawing a topo from scratch. You're going to bring, be bringing it in from a CAD file. If this file is drawn in 3D CAD accurately, then that file can generate a 3D topo map automatically. So to do that, I'll go ahead and select this topo and delete it out. And first, I need to link in a CAD file by going to Insert tab at the top, choose Link CAD, and then browse to find the file. Once you have it selected, there are a few options before you import it in. Under Colors, I choose Black and White to turn the, light, the lines to black instead of the colors of the layers. Under Layers, I can choose all of them, just the visible layers, or if I click Specify, it will bring up a window to allow me to choose the layers as it comes in. In this case, I'll choose Visible. Import Units, I'll keep at Auto Detect. And Positioning, I always keep at Auto Center to Center. And you have all the options chosen, click Open. And it'll bring in the CAD file. I'll zoom out and go to a 3D view because um, it'll be a little bit easier to see what's going on. So clicking on the 3D shortcut view, you can see it's brought in the CAD file and all the contour layer information has been drawn correctly in, in 3D up above the page. To generate a topo model from this, go back to the Massing and Sight tab, choose Topo Surface, and this time choose Create from Import, pull it down and choose Select Import Instance. Here, hover and select the file, and this opens up a window uh, asking you to choose the layers to generate the model from. And Revit needs to generate the model from the, the contours, and so it may require you to clean up the AutoCAD drawing before you bring it into the model so that you have those layers distinct and separate. I'm going to check, check check none and scroll down and choose just the layers that I know that those contour lines have been drawn at. When I'm done, I'll click OK and it'll generate my topo surface and put me directly into an edit mode or I can just click finish surface to, to get out of it. From now, I don't really need my CAD drawing for a while, so I'll go ahead and unload it so that it doesn't slow down my computer by going to the manage tab at the top, click manage links, and then under the CAD formats tab, I'll choose the AutoCAD drawing and click unload. That keeps its reference, but it unloads the file to speed up your computer. And I'll click OK, and that makes it go away. If I go to a side elevation view, in this case the east elevation, you can see it's brought in my topo model, but it's spreaded in an actual elevation, which is 1,000 feet above my zero level. So I want to bring my zero levels up to the proper contour line for my finished floor. So to do that, I'll zoom in and choose my levels and then move them up with the move tool. Um, in this case, it's going to be 950 feet to bring it up to the right spot. Doing that, zooming in, you can see that they're um, 
sitting on my contour the way I want them to, but the elevation is reading 950 feet for the first floor. So to adjust that, I need to adjust my project base point as well to bring that level back to a zero reading. You can adjust the project base point by finding in your view by first going to Visibility and Graphics under the View tab at the top. Choose Visibility and Graphics. And under the Model Categories tab, scroll down to you see Site and expand the category and choose Project Base Point to make it visible and click OK. Zooming out, I can see my project base point now and selecting it, I can see its coordinates are all set to zero. To change those coordinates, I'll click the paperclip next to it. And here I can click on its elevation and move it up 950 feet to my levels and hit enter. Zooming in now, you can see the level is reading zero feet for my finished floor. I'll click the paperclip of the project base point again to keep it from being changed, and I can hide it by going back to visibility and graphics. Expanding site and unchecking project base point to hide it away. Now that everything's reading correctly, I can go back to my site view, and I should see a topo map where I can always select it and hit edit surface if I want to edit the contours. But keeping in mind that this isn't going to be the site that we just modeled that's going to be our new site. This is the existing site we've created. So to take advantage of the cut fill tool, we want to define this site as the existing site, create a new one so that Revit can look at the difference between the two and see how much cut and fill we've added to them and it can spit out that number for us automatically. So to do that, we use the grade region tool. And before we use a grade region tool, we have to tell Revit that this isn't our new site, but this is the existing site. To do that, we need to change its phase to existing by selecting the topo, right-clicking on it, and going to its element properties. In here, you'll notice at the bottom of the window is it the phase that it was created again, created in. And right now, it's defined as new, as new construction, meaning it's a new site. But we want to tell Revit that this is actually the existing site by pulling down New Construction and choose Existing, and click OK. You'll notice it's turned it to gray, and that's because that's the way this view is set up, is to show Existing as grayed out. After changing your topo to Existing, if it disappeared on you, that just means that your view filters um, are different. To change the filter, you want to right-click in white space in the view, go to View Properties, scroll down to Phase Filter, and you'll notice mine says show all, but your, yours may only say show new, in which case existing items won't be visible. So staying in show all, I now have my existing site where I can start modifying it to create a graded region. To do that, go to the Massing and Site tab, click the Graded Region tool, and what this is telling me with the first opposite with the first option is that it's going to create a new topo surface exactly like this existing one but it's going to demo out my existing one and just leave my new one to modify. So I'll always click the first option. So after choosing the first option I'll click on the topo surface that demos the existing one and opens me up into an edit mode where I can see all the dots that make up the contour lines. If it's a little bit too complicated, you can clean up the drawing by choosing Simplify Surface at the ribbon and changing the increments that it uses to draw the map and click OK. Now that I'm in the edit mode, I can start modifying my contour lines. 